everyone. I'm uh, Ben Van Klenken from uh, CodeScan. And I'm joined today uh, by Stuart Pierce, the Director of Application Deva Development from Sophos. Uh, Sophos is a large computer and network security company. Uh, and they've got a large and growing Salesforce org with lots of custom code. So today I want to start by introducing CodeScan. Yes, sir. And I'm going to get uh, Stuart here to um, tell a bit of a story about how he's taken his team at, at uh, Sophos and grown it by 500%. Uh, and um, some of the problems he's uh, encountered over the, along the way and um, how he's solved these problems using CodeScan as uh, one of the core components. Uh, and then we're going to do a live demo, and I'm going to get uh, Stuart to sort of commentate a little bit on, on uh, the bits of the, the, the tool that he found useful. And we're going to open up for some questions. So uh, uh, CodeScan is a, a static code analysis tool for uh, Salesforce code to help you improve the quality of your code. Uh, it does this by taking your Apex, Visual Force, and Lightning, Aura code, and um, and looking for patterns in the, in the code. By, um, and it, it tries to identify bugs and style issues, security vulnerabilities, uh, quality issues with your code, uh, and identifies it, puts it into the tool. Um, and if those, uh, if those 230 rules are not enough, we, you can also build your own uh, rules. So uh, GoScan uh, helps you to uh, apply best practices to your uh, development workflow. Um, and uh, it helps to uh, enforce uh, um, your uh, compliance with coding guidelines. Um, so it helps reduce uh, bugs and security vulnerabilities and technical debt complexity going into production. Um, and all, all of these things together help you to uh, Im improve the, the the uh, efficiency of your team. Um, and it also helps to increase the maintainability of your org. Um, so, you know, come down the track in a year's time, uh, developers trying to uh, maintain the code can get started quicker. Um, and ultimately, all of these things uh, help to uh, reduce the total cost of ownership of your org. So CodeScan is used uh, uh, in many different sectors um, by uh, small companies, uh, not-for-profits, up to large Fortune 500 companies with uh, multiple, multiple orgs and uh, millions of lines of code. And uh, one of our oldest customers is Sophos, uh, a global name in security. Uh, Stuart, um, can you uh, tell us a bit what you've been up to and how you've um, got to where you are today? Sure. Good morning. So, uh, for, for those that aren't aware, Sophos is in the cybersecurity space, uh, antivirus type uh, products. Um, our, our use of Salesforce, we, we use it as CRM, but we also use it quite extensively in our product delivery, product fulfillment, um, which leads to quite a large and uh, complex implementation uh, as we're really coupling tightly with the products to, to make sure that we deliver that, that best customer experience there. Um, so, so we've, we've been using Salesforce since 2011. The, the initial implementation came from a, a series of external partners. Um, it's pretty sizable, pretty complex, and it, the, the depth of oversight during that um, implementation meant that uh, we, we were initially carrying a you know, fairly significant amount of technical debt. Um, which was causing some, some growing pains just in terms of our ability to release and manage the platform. Um, so, certainly when I first took over the team, you know, I was pretty surprised having come from an enterprise development at the lack of insight into the, the code quality, where we were, uh, and our ability to manage processes that are just kind of standard on, on the way we work for our .NET and Java stack. Um, so in parallel to that, we were bringing our team in-house with a, a new offshore team in India. It's always difficult building a team, but building that kind of growth rate um, is really challenging. Mm. So, so we set about a, um, a program of change, really to introduce that uh, kind of enterprise development workflow that we were using elsewhere. Um, 
looked to put some controls and insight around how we used Salesforce, stabilize the system, and really drive up our productivity. Um, so, so that was really version control, introducing peer review, um, a lot of automation in the, the build and deployment space, so moving away from change sets to a very automated driven metadata API release. Um, I also needed to identify a static analysis tool to, to really help drive the, the peer review and the productivity because trying to manually peer review the volume of code base we've got, it, it really doesn't scale. We, we pretty much hit a wall at one point um, before we introduced CodeScan just in terms of our ability to review all of that change um, manually. So uh, now, now Ben's going to demo and walk through the, the kind of process journey we went through um, and how that works with CodeScan. OK, so I'm just going to flip over to um, a, a typical CodeScan result output. Um, so as you can see, this is the dashboard. And um, I was just going to uh, ask uh, Stuart to, to point out a few of the, the, uh, the metrics here that uh, he's found useful in, in, uh, in, in, your, in your usage of the tool. Sure. So, so when we implemented the tool, the, the very first uh, task really was just to run the analysis across all of our implementation, get, get that baseline insight into where, where were we from a, a defect, vulnerability, uh, kind of code smell and complexity point of view. Um, so, so you get the high level view here. There, there are a series of additional measures that let you really focus and prioritize um, your, your work. Um, so, so you can drill down into where, where do I get the biggest returns for, for my effort in refactoring a particular piece of your code base. Um, so, so how do I really minimize that risk? Yeah, so for example here, you can see um, a scatter plot to help maybe uh, target in on some of those uh, files. And rather than focusing on all the files, you can have a look at uh, which ones are best targeted. You've also got, um, you can do that with code coverage as well. So you can see, for example, you've got a um, very complex f uh, file here that's uh, very badly covered, uh, which maybe needs more attention than uh, a, a simple file with um, uh, not so much coverage. Probably should cover everything, but uh, no. Uh, same with, uh, goes with uh, code duplication. We've got metrics for that, so you can uh, track down duplicated code. You've got just general metrics like uh, number of lines and stuff. Uh, complexity, you can drill down to which files are your most complex files, um, and so forth. Yeah. So um, you were mentioning a little bit about uh, the code, um, the development workflow that you used yeah. in your team. Can you tell us a little bit about what that was? Sure. So, so we introduced a, a Git flow based process. Um, so, so developers will, will work on their, their own branch of code for the, the capability that they're working on, commit those changes in as they go. Um, one of the early things we did was then to put some alteration around that so that each time you commit, that triggers a, a code scan analysis um, and it gets that feedback to the developers of, of you know, the, the code quality and any issues they may have introduced um, so, so that we catch that early where it's cheapest to, to resolve. Mm. So uh, just as a way of an example, um, we're um, take a look at this. Uh, so as a, as a developer, we might have um, uh, we're gonna, I'm just going to copy and paste some, um, some code that I butchered earlier. Um, this is a, you'll see it's a pretty bad piece of code. And um, we're going to jump over to Jenkins here. Jenkins is a CI tool. You don't have to use Jenkins, but there's actually quite a few different ways. I believe you guys use Bamboo. We do. Um, and you actually triggered off Git instead of pulling the metadata directly from Salesforce. There's actually a few different ways of doing this. Yeah. But uh, so Git uh, Jenkins, uh, I'm just going to run this quickly. But basically, what would happen after uh, the build process is you'd see a screen a little bit like this with the, the leak period here on the right, which is like the delta uh, of what's changed since the last. So this, this I think, is uh, 
you did something else. You actually put that leak period uh, into Bitbucket, I, I think. So, so we do pull that into Bitbucket. We, we also have this view for the developers as well. Um, so, so, I mean, this obviously is a fairly poor piece of coding um, where the developer needs to do some rework. Um, so, so they would get an alert um, notifying that their, their code has issues. Um, you, you can configure quality gates. So, so this has failed the quality gate. So in our implementation, um, the, the system actively blocks that from progressing. Um, so, so the developer would then have to come here, drill down into the issues, understand what they did wrong, uh, and use that then to, to remediate. So yeah, I mean, in, in this particular case, you, you've got a uh, jumbled incrementer on the for loop, so it'd be a, a defect there. And um, you know, if you were manually peer reviewing this, uh, using I and J as the two incrementers, it'd be relatively easy to, to miss that that was a, a potential defect. Um, and we've got some SQL injection here, which um, for us is certainly a blocker, uh, but should be a blocker for everybody. Uh, yeah, and also a potential governor limits issue there. Yeah. So, so as a developer, uh, are you going to go and uh, yeah, expose issues? Yeah, I'd better fix that now. So I'm going to jump over to uh, Eclipse here. We've got the plugin. And we actually yep. see those, uh, those three errors that, um, that uh, uh, we identified. Um, yeah. and, and we could actually go and fix it. So in this case, uh, we should probably parameterize the build, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the SQL statement. So we use something like that. Yep. And as soon as we save it, then um, that error goes away. Yeah. Um, let's fix that jumble incrementer. And now that you have that real-time feedback, that, that's great in terms and of closing the loop. Mm. So it's a lot quicker. <laughs> and finally, uh, uh, obviously this is actually all ridiculous, so we're just going to bulkify the call, save that, and immediately it goes away. Yeah. Much better. So how does that uh, development workflow help in the end? Uh, yeah, um, so, so really the, the value we got from this process, um, it, it meant that we, we could scale the team, we could maintain our quality. Um, it, it, it acted almost as a kind of basic training tool for, for some of the less experienced developers in that they were getting much more feedback real time as they went. Um, so it was helping raise their overall capability. Um, but, but the other big, big gain for me in terms of the, the automation here uh, previously, I, I had a small team of senior engineers that had to review literally everything, uh, and they were just dying as we tried to scale. So, so by bringing this in, this covers off the, the kind of standard issues, the, the vulnerabilities. Uh, it allowed those guys really to focus on the, the higher value design issues uh, and how we maximize a piece of code for maintainability and extensibility. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. To, um, so today we've, um, we've uh, seen a bit about how uh, uh, CodeScan can be used to uh, improve your methodology and your workflow development. If you're using Agile, this is um, a great companion tool. Um, it's great for tracking uh, quality metrics uh, over, over time. So um, you can see changes over time. Everything's historical. Um, it's a great tool to hone in on uh, what you want to refactor um, and obviously reducing the amount of um, issues that make it into production which of course um, is super important as a developer if you if the code goes into production with a bug um, you'll hear about it and that's you don't want to do hot fixes that just makes um, everyone's life <laughs> difficult. Um, and as uh, Stuart pointed out, it really frees up uh, develop, uh, the senior developers to, to really focus in on high value issues instead of spending too much time on peer reviews. So um, thanks very much for your time, Stuart. Appreciate it. And thanks for listening. Um, uh, if we've got a booth just over there, uh, please come and see us if you want to know a bit more. Um, and we'll just uh, open up for questions if anyone's got any questions. Yes. 
Say that again. Let's go back into our muscle scan. Thank you, incremental scan. So, like, developer check me through codes. Here we are. Help me and check me. We want to check me all the time. Just check me through code. Don't forget. Thank you, sir. Yes. In incremental. Um, so a lot of develop. So she's asking whether we can do incremental for just a single developer. So um, w if the developer is working in a single sandbox, the, the the best way of doing things would be to, uh, to actually check in everything and then remember that leak period that we were looking at earlier. Um, this section. Uh, will show the delta of what that developer has been working on. Uh, so you know, you so you would actually see the difference in what they have been working on in that sandbox. That's probably the best way of identifying uh, what a single developer has been working on. Yeah, and, and so so we were part of the the DX pilot program. Um, as you adopt DX and you move to more soft driven developments. That, that really helps assist with the, the delta view and how you manage this flow of change as well. Anything else? Yeah. Do you know about adding a custom rule? Oh, yeah. Um, so, custom rules can be built uh, using, um, using XPath. So, if you imagine a, uh, a piece of code, um, as a, we, we, we parse it into what's called an abstract syntax tree, which is a, a tree. Uh, and if you imagine a tree, XML is also a tree. And you can search it with a language called XPath, which is like an XML search language. Uh, um, and then you take that XPath and you can create a custom rule from that. Uh, if you go to our website on uh, codescan.com, you can, there's a tutorial with a video on there and you can, um, and you can check it out. We've got a little tool to help with that and uh, yeah. Anything else? Well, thank you, everyone.